Um, hello, so today we are going to do problems from weekly, weekly contest 343. So the second problem is first completely painted row or column. So we have a zero indexed array um, and we have a matrix um, and they both have integers in this range. Um, and we go through each index in the array um, and then we paint the cell that has that same number in the array. And we want to return the smallest index where either a row or a column will be completely painted. So for example, what that means here is um, we have first one, so we paint one. And then we have three, so we paint three. We have four, we paint four. And you can see now, once we paint four, we have this row that is completely filled. And so we return the index of the array where we filled an entire row or column, and that would be this index here, which is index two. So that's the idea. Now, if we take a look at the second example here, um, first we got two, we paint it, we get eight, we paint it, we get seven, we paint that, four, we paint it again. And now you can see once we paint four, we have this entire column. So it's row or column, that's really important here, that is filled. And so in that case, we return the index of this, inde this value four, and that's zero, one, two, three, that's three, so that's what we return. So that's the idea of the problem. Now, um, a couple of things to look at here for the constraint. The values are unique both in the array and in the matrix. Okay, um, and the l the array length is the m by n length. So basically, this tells us that all the values in the matrix will be in the array. Okay, and so now let's see how we can how we can tackle it. Um, okay, so how do we tackle this? So um, the easiest thing to do uh, is to just map what we will be doing. So what what do we need to know? Well, we want to know if any row is complete or um or um. So the array, let's say for this example, is one three four two, or a column is complete, right? So either um, we have a case where this, for example, column is complete, or we may have a case where this row is complete, right? And so, how do we know if a row is complete or not? Well. First, let's, let's take an example where the, the, the lengths are different between the rows and columns. So let's say we have something like this, and then we have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, okay? So for something like this, to know the, the row is complete, all of this row is complete, well, what do we need to know? We need to know if for this row, we have found this number of columns set, right? Um, so here we have how many columns? We have four columns and two rows, right? Zero, one, okay? So for a row to be filled, we need the number of elements that we found from the array. Um, we need them to be basically, let's, let's say if we record for each row, we record the count in this array, right? Let's say, for example, for row zero. Um, once we have that we have five values, right then we can say this row is filled okay so if, with something like this let's say for example um, if we do it if we start doing this let's say we our array is maybe let's say our array is like um, is like two um, three nine four five ten one right so for an, and then maybe we have the remaining values afterwards right like seven six and you get the idea okay so with something like this what will happen is that we will first um we'll find two so for two um we'll find two we'll put it here and let's let's say to to be able to record this we need to have the rows count for each row and for each column because columns also are important because if we if we find seven then this column would be filled right and so we need the counts for rows Right, let's just have it as an array where for each index we have how many how many elements we found so far. So here for rows we have just one, zero and one. For columns, however, we have uh, five. And so for columns we would have uh, zero, one. These are the indices, by the way, two, uh, three, four, five. Actually, it's just four. That's how many we have. Okay. And so l l let's do this. So we have first we find two. And so two is at index um, one, right? 
uh, it's in the row zero and so for row zero we found one and then for column uh, one we found one okay and then four and then we fill three and so three now is in row um, zero right and so we have two now here and then in column two so here we have one and so for column if any of them is equal to um, if any of the columns count right is equal to um, two then the column is filled so we let's keep that in mind here as we are filling these and then we have nine so nine is here nine is in row one so row one we have one and then column three we have one and then we get um, to four we fill four now this one has um, three elements right and then now row, column three is filled okay because now column three has two and so we stop right here and we return two three we return three okay if we didn't have um, nine let's say if nine was not here then what will happen is that in this one here this would be just one and so we will continue we'll get to five we'll get to five we will say okay now we have four elements here and then we'll get to 10 okay let's remove 10 as well just so that we don't get into a, um, and then we have one and so when we have one we will say now this one has five elements and so if it has five elements that means we found the row is complete and so we return the index here which is two three four index four in the array okay because this row now is filled okay so that's sort of the idea we just keep a counter for each row and for each column of how many elements we found so far and then once one of them reaches the the number that will make it completely filled uh, we just return the index of the array element that we just um, that we just take took into account right um, and that's pretty much it so that should be straightforward um, now the only thing we need to do actually to be able to um, to be able to do this is for each element in the matrix we need to store for the element itself so for example for five we need to store that it's in position zero four now why do we do that well in the array we have the values of the element so to avoid having to scan the array to find the element and then get the the, num the row index and the column index so that we can fill them here um, to avoid having to scan every time to find it we just have a map where it tells us initially the value and the, ind the indices of the row and column that way we uh, we save time and it's all one operation for this right so that's the idea now let's code it up um, okay, so let's code this up. So first, we definitely need the rows and columns. And so that would be um, the rows is just the number of rows and then the columns is just the number of columns, right? Um, and then now what we need is the rows, which initially is zero. This is just the counter, right, that we s talked about. So this would need to be the number of rows. This needs to be the number of columns. Um, so this is columns. And now we need to get the indices of the values so that it's easier to get them for the arrays element, right? So this would be just would go through the matrix, right? Um, and so this is the columns. And for each one value, which is going, we can get it by um, just the index i and j, we are going to assign the coordinates or the indices, right? Um, and now we go through the array. Um, so just going through the length of the array now what do we need to do well we first get the index from for the array value right we get the indices in the matrix because that basically will allow us to say for this row i we just found an element and for this column j we just found another element okay and now we want to check if any of them is filled now for the row for this row to be filled, we need to have the number of columns in that row. That's what we saw, saw in the example. So we need the number of columns because a row has the, n the columns. And then for the column, it has the number of rows values. And so for columns J, we want to see if we have C um, elements filled. If that's the case, that means 
this is the smallest index where we fill because we just go through the array in the order of indices and then uh, the first time we have a filled row or a column we just want to return that index so we just return it um, now we are guaranteed to have a solution um, and so we don't need to return anything at the end because we are guaranteed that this will will get called and so we can just um, run but it looks like there is a small problem here um, Um, sorry, this should be R because it's, as we said, for a row, we have the number, for a column, we have the number of rows elements, right? So that's the mistake there. Um, then this should be OR as well because we want either a row field or a column field. Um, and this looks good. Let's submit. And it does pass, right? Now, in terms of time complexity, this loop here is O of n by m, or rows by columns, right? Um, time. Um, and this one here is O of just the length of the array, right? So it's, uh, let's call it, the length of the array also is m by n, because that's what the problem says. Um, so this also is r by c. Um, so you can see here, this means that overall, this is O of R by C time, so M by N time. Um, and then in terms of space, we are using this indices, which is also R by C. Um, and these rows and columns are also um, the number of rows and the number of columns, so R plus C. So this is R plus C, this is R by C, so the dominant terms is O of R C, so O of R C space as well. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the idea. Um, please like and subscribe and see you on the next one. Bye.